what I think is if God is real then God is real and that means everybody has a longing for God and actually I think that's true because I think even if you look at it anthropologically historically every culture in the world is built around God in some way they may have a different understanding of it they may be wrong or right about this that or the other but they're all focusing at some point on where they think the divine is it's always at the heart of every culture except this one which has decided to pretend that's not real for a bit mm. but that's not going to work because mm. I think humans have a need for it they have a need for God because that's what we're supposed to do that's where we're supposed to be orientated so if that's true then we're going to want to look in that direction mm even though the whole culture is telling us that that's nonsense. I always had a sense that there was something very powerful and very beautiful in nature. And then mm. later on at school, I discovered Wordsworth and Wordsworth was kind of putting words to these feelings that there was something very profound. So I was a sort of pantheistic nature lover for a long time. Mm. I wouldn't call myself pantheistic anymore, but I still have the same sense that there's something very divine and sacred and beautiful in the, in the natural world. Mm. And, and we, we've got a big problem when we're so divorced from it so that was just the way that if i look back now i could say i think those were religious yeah. experiences actually but i would never have put it in those uh, words though you did have a sort of semi teenage atheist sort of period. yeah i mean intellectually i did i definitely went through the, my sort of richard dawkins phase before i'd heard of richard dawkins <laughs> you know i thought it was very clever to explain to all the christians why they were all so wrong but <laughs> but that was just me being an idiot when I, by the time i was 40 or so i thought well i i think i need to go and I need a I need a spiritual path here. Mm. I think I need to to learn from the wisdom of the ages because I you know there's something bigger going on. So yeah, I, I the first place I went was was Buddhism, which is often the case with Western people these mm -hmm. days because Buddhism, Buddhism Buddhism is very accessible. So I spent about five or six years studying Zen and practicing Zen and Chan Buddhism, which was very productive and I did learn a lot and I had a lot of experiences. I mm. especially learned a lot about the nature of the self. Buddhism is very good at teaching you the the nature of the kind of the false self mm. but there was also something missing from it um and i wasn't sure what it was but i sort of realized to my horror that maybe it was god <laughs> <laughs> i thought oh. no this can't be true <laughs> no or i so I didn't want to use that word but i thought well i, mean, I don't know I, I sort of wanted to worship something which i thought was a bit weak of me um but there was a lack of relationship somehow in buddhism for me it wasn't right. a relationship to the... I felt like there was a source of something. There was something big going on, and mm. I didn't have a relation to it w with Buddhism. So so at the same time, I was studying. I was reading mythology. I was spending... Going on four-day retreats in the woods, four days of fasting in Dartmoor um, in the woods, and doing all sorts of other things as well. And eventually, I ended up thinking, well, look, I can, I, maybe I need a nature religion, right? Because I mm. love nature. I should have mm. a nature religion. That That might work, so... I've always been very interested in sort of magic and things. So I ended up, as you say, joining a Wiccan coven. Mm. So a sort of new age witchy thing for a while. For a couple of years, I did that. And that was interesting as well. I learned some things from that. But Wicca is, is a sort of false made up religion that with, with lots of different aspects of things cobbled together from kind of the Masons and, and uh, Alistair Crowley and all sorts of other stuff like that. So some of it's interesting, but some of it's a bit sinister. Mm -hmm. You don't realize that till you're in it. Not deliberately so, but I think that that kind of thing is playing with powers that the people involved in it don't necessarily realize they're playing with. All sorts of strange things started happening to me. I had a dream about Jesus, and I thought, what was that about? <laughs> I wrote it down. It was so very particular. And then I started having sort of... Weirdly, I kept meeting Christians everywhere, so I felt like <laughs> something was happening, right? So I, I felt like all these Christians were coming towards me. At the time, I was running this <laughs> writing class, and suddenly I was had all these priests saying, can you help me with my writing? Don't and you hate it when that happens? Terrible. I know. They're everywhere. And then, then, I, then I'd do things like discovering that friends of mine who I hadn't known were Christian were actually Christian, and, and then all sorts of stuff. And then it was just suddenly it was Christians everywhere. And I was going, what's going on? <laughs> and then I really started to have a sense that, that I was being dragged out of Wicca by something or someone mm. and being told not to do this anymore and I felt like I knew who it was but I didn't want to think about that <laughs> <laughs> but if, a lot of things happened to me to mm. cut a long story, story short and it was partly a sort of intellectual uh, dissatisfaction with what I was doing but more than that it was actually a lot of experiences uh, mm. I felt like I was being really forcibly dragged towards Christianity and you know C.S. Lewis wrote about this very famously mm. didn't he for mm. want, uh, fearing the, the approach of the one who he desperately desired not to meet it was a bit like that yes so in the end i just thought oh, maybe i'm a christian damn <laughs> this is bad i don't want to be a christian don't like christians don't like this this is bad but you know that then of course i started to look into to christianity and, and start reading the real 
getting into the real meat of it. Mm. And then, of course, you realize that it's not what you thought it was and that the depth of it and the cosmology of it is really not what you thought you learned at mm. school. Mm. And it's very badly communicated <laughs> to us, unfortunately. The, the, well, the, the trendy vicars attention. didn't, didn't trendy have the whole, didn't do whole it. story. I, mean, they're, they're hard, I, <laughs> I appreciate their efforts, but it wasn't uh, the attempt to make Christianity relevant just makes it less relevant. Um, but yeah. anyway, so I just started looking around and w- walking into churches and sitting at the back and things. And eventually, uh, I walked into an Orthodox monastery, a new Orthodox monastery that's opened in Ireland, the first one, very small, just a few minutes from my home actually and uh, I went to the divine liturgy and I'd never experienced anything like that before and after you've been to two or three you can't stop and uh, here I am now I turn out to be an orthodox Christian and you know it's interesting there's a friend of mine Martin Shaw who you've spoken to before mm. and uh, he's also recently become an orthodox Christian mm. after 10 years of being a sort of pagan storyteller I yeah. know Martin very well and somebody asked him recently they said why did you convert to Christianity then and he said, I don't think I did. I think I just realized I was a Christian all along. Mm. And I kind of feel the same, actually. I kind of feel like when you join the Orthodox Church, people say, welcome home. It's very nice. Mm. And it's a weird thing in one mm. way because I'm a member of the Romanian Orthodox Church. Mm. Not my home, I'm not Romanian. Yeah. But in another way, in a deeper way, it does feel like that. It feels yeah. like you've come back to something you sort of always knew. It's a very prodigal mm. son. You know, you oh. sort of feel like you're coming back to something. I did anyway. So yeah. I don't feel like I've converted to something weird and new and strange at all. I feel like I've gone, oh, this was yeah, what it this was all is about. Where I, this yeah. is where I came from. This is what I've been circling around <laughs> yeah. my whole life. So it's a strange feeling. And I'm quite a new Christian. Only two or three years I've been in the church. So I'm still very much feeling my way, mm. you know, but it's... Jump straight yeah. into a it's two the only year way to long do it. theological Let's story. Throw yourself <laughs> in. You have to go in at the deep end. When you're my age, you know, it's like a... I've got. I wish, I wish I'd started 30 years ago, but anyway. The original one-hour interview with Bell and Justin can be found in the description. Quoting from C.S. Lewis, You must picture me alone in that room in Magdalene, night after night, feeling whenever my mind lifted, even for a second from my work, the steady, unrelenting approach of him whom I so earnestly desired not to meet. That which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. In the Trinity term of 1929, I gave in and admitted that God was God and knelt and prayed. Perhaps that night, the most dejected and reluctant convert in all of England. I did not see then what is now the most shining and obvious thing, the divine humility, which will accept a convert even on such terms. The prodigal son at least walked home on his own feet, but who can duly adore that love which will open the high gates to a prodigal who is brought in kicking, struggling, resentful, and even darting his eyes in every direction for a chance of escape. In illustrating God's love for us, when we finally, however reluctantly, come back to him, the Lord said in Luke 15, in the prodigal son, parable the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven and against you i am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants quick bring the best robe and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet bring the fat and calf and kill it let's have a feast and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found so they began to celebrate i pray that you come to the father through the son If you've not already done so, Christ is king and every knee will bow. Absolutely.